All right. So last time hmm. in negative two presents the curse of Strahd, uh, our intrepid heroes journeyed into the woods surrounding the basin of Mount Baratok in search of the mad mage um, for whatever insights or potentially just another ally in the fight against Strahd. Really just killing time while a dress is being made. But still they ventured through to where the wolves dare not go. Uh, after about a day or so of, of uh, travel, they, they rested for the evening, a quiet evening in the woods, but that morning interrupted by the sudden appearance of the mage. Confused and aggressive, he challenged your party. Uh, you did your best, you, the best you could to try to stifle off his mad ramblings, but inevitably it, it, the conflict escalated uh, as Ryan attempted to pull out a scroll and cast a spell. Forgoing that spell, the battle ensued and you inevitably were stopped in place before he vanished into the wilderness once again. So we will say that post the conflict, it has now been a couple hours of searching through the wilderness and there seems to be no more sign of the mad mage of Mount Baratok. What are you doing? Ain't no sign of a mate. If we keep on like this, we're just gonna get lost out here. Agreed. Do we see, uh... Do we... Where, you said we're at the base of the mountain? Uh, so the woods themselves go for, for uh, about a mile or so, and, they, and that is essentially the base of the mountain, correct? <sighs> But he's up in a cave or something somewhere. If he's a wizard or a magic user, you could have some sort of teleportation circle built up in there. Oh yeah, they can make their own houses. Yeah. What was the name of that spell? Uh, Tiny Hut. Lehman, uh, Lehman's yeah, Tiny it, Hut. But there's a few yeah, of Lehman's them. Uh, somebody's Magnificent Mansion, I forget the name of it. <laughs> it was the other one. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Um, He's also got a private sanctum. What a sanctum. So what we do when we... put our dicks out here, or what? Let's, uh... Add up I the mountain, I guess, unless anybody else has got a better idea. I didn't think it was going to be this fucking difficult. Well, it was it, much it, worse than I thought it was. You didn't hear his head. You heard his head? Yes. I mean, I heard... You should have just fucking used the fucking scroll. Oh boy, here we go. You know, I'm sort of tired of when this happens, you just get angry. So we can do this. We can just fight, get it over with. And put it behind us, yeah? So... Cole takes out the spear and the shield. Right, and when you want, mate. Ash steps back to Durango. Got five on Cole. You think that will resolve this, uh, Mr. Ash? Absolutely not, but I still got five on Cole. There for Gentlemen, a surely there is no need for fisticuffs in the woods at this moment. Come, you saw how this wizard fled before the great Durango Fortescue. Consider the matter settled, no? It, you know, I uh, tend to agree. You're a fucking idiot for trying to fight me in the woods, first off. You knock me out here, the only one that's going to pick me up is you. You think I'm that stupid? Why, I was just giving you the option. Fuck off. Puts it back. Just seriously, what are we doing? 
We're heading back to uh, Rilaki. Ash is going to scan the mountainside, see if there's anything that would resemble an indentation of a cave or anything like that from where he's at. Just like any landscape features that would lend themselves to that. And make a perception check. Perception check. Oh, uh, that is a nice 15. Yeah, uh, you know, and so you, you managed to do, you know, what you typically do in the situation, right? You pivot yourself up very quickly and easily up a tall tree, climbing several branches in. You find some sturdy ones and you limber like a cat and bounce up. And looking over, you can see that fog rolling through the forest and around surrounding. It's it's if anything beyond Mount Baratok doesn't no longer exists in your vision, as you can see, nothing but cloud and fog. Scanning the mountainside for something. I mean, it, it's only been a couple hours. He couldn't be far. How far could one one old man get? Right? You know, he can change it to an elk, but even then, you've hunted elk in the forest. And at least there's signs, but you see nothing. No sign of any sort of civilization, campfire, nothing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't even see any place that looks like it would shelter anybody out here. Well, he's a mad mage. I imagine he's probably got a hidey hole of some sort. Get one of you, uh, magic -y type folks detect some of that shit. Do you really want to stand out here in the middle of the, uh, in the forest while I take a few moments to look for this? Gentlemen, I believe the question is at hand. Should we find this hidey hole? Is it wise to step inside? Hmm? Yeah, Why step inside? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I might have been a bit electrocuted last time. It's very clear that this guy's got some skill. Doesn't matter how deranged he is. I think the real question is, do we want to try to corral the men as for our own use, or do we just let him let him go, let him do his thing? I'm sorry, do you know how to blow lightning out of your ass? Because I sure as hell don't. <laughs> if I if I did, it wouldn't be coming on my ass. Precisely. Okay. It's still not a waste of time. Use the fucking scroll. Next time, we're holding him down. I will follow your lead on this, Mr. Rash, or Mr. Tens. It seems that the overpowering this man is not uh, viable. Perhaps we should seek to befriend. Give him what he wants, hmm? We... That's what we just tried. It didn't fucking work. That's did what I'm trying to fucking tell you. Did you not hear the words leaving his mouth? Mr. Tens, what did he ask for? <sighs> Challenge. He wanted to be challenged. At least that's what I heard over and over and over again, on top of the mumbling bullshit in his head that shattered, that sounded like someone's mind was shattered. Mr. Tenz, uh, perhaps my ears deceived me. I find that quite unlikely. I am the great Rango Fortas you. But it seemed to me he was in search of his name. No, he said, he said quite a bit about who am I. And then... We know it's not name on the tower because he insulted him. But we don't even know that. He's a madman. He could have been his name and he forgot. Well, then the other option is for you to hold him down and either use the scroll and see if it fucking works or you just let me dig through his brain for a minute. Listen, well, I, I ain't stopping you from digging. Yeah, you're coming at us like we don't agree with that plan. It tends to be a bit aggressive. You sure you don't just want to punch it out, mate? I won't even use a spear. I put the sh I put the spear on the, and the shield and it's all secured in my back. Is straight up old fashioned fist fight. What you say? The music builds slowly behind Cole. 
<laughs> no, because I'm not going to fight fair. Well, let me know if you change your mind. And, uh... So, I think... Best course of action. We ain't finding nothing out here. Go about asking but about we his did. name. We've we found, found the guy. Well, unless you've got a better idea of which direction to go in. We go that fucking way, that fucking way. He could be behind us, up there. We don't even know. Do we recall a library of any sorts back in Velaki? Question to DM and or PC. Make a history check. Oh, <laughs> five. It wanted to be 19, but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you, you, you actually remember there being a distinct lack of libraries. I mean, either we trudge if we want to keep going after this guy, which it sounds like we do, either we just keep plowing through the forest until he finds us again, or we stumble upon him somehow, or we go back to Velaki, we ask around, see what we can find. There are only two things that I think would be helpful in this situation. We can go yeah. talk to the elves again, see if they know him. But I... And Cole, you could potentially pray. See if you get an answer. Though, it's up to you. Yeah, we're not on terms. Just because you're not on terms doesn't mean you can't exactly do things. Um, and honestly, maybe talk I to the priest. I don't have any like commune or anything like that. Seriously, I've got this ceremony. You could talk to the priest. Perhaps he could look for answers. Maybe the Burgermeister in his purple light at night. Still got to go look into that one. Yeah, we will. Face out of Velaki right now, so we've got time. Listen, Mike, I, I don't know if we got any more good. I say we shouldn't find the guy. But I don't know if there's any more good stumble around blind, yeah? Yeah, let's head back to town. Talk to a few folks, see what we can figure out. I agree with Mr. Resh. We shall return to town and spend no more time than we need to in the dirt, yes? Sure. We didn't even get, we didn't get very far, mate. We're only about an hour for sure. We could be at the blue water in time for dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna head back then. Because uh, <laughs> Mr. Sassy Pants over here is gonna... Fuck off. Yep. Yep. Has anyone thought to ask our uh, avian friends about uh, this mad mage of the forest? Hmm? They seem to be collectors of, of hidden fact. <laughs> Definitely try. If they're not, you know, concerned about the uh, the winery disaster. Anyway, all right, let's go. And you all, you all gather yourselves, and it is a tense and awkward walk back to the shoreline where you place all of your camping items back into the your packs and once again set out across Lake Zarovic the placid dark mirror reflecting the gray sky above that fog biting curling at the edges of the lake itself as you make your way slowly silently across for about an hour or so, you 
You hear that thud again of the boat scraping against the sand of the shoreline. You can see the walls of Alaki in the distance. Pull the boat out of the water once again and make your way back to town. That uh, boat ride count as a short rest again? Sure. Cool. Warlock be liking that. Yeah, I'll take <laughs> one of those. I don't think I get anything back right now. Because I didn't use any spell slots. I get my spell health I get at least. My... Get my arrow shots back. Rango sure tried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Divinity is only on long rest, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you gather uh, things again, um, trudge up the muddy hill back to the, the gates, uh, then those northern gates of the town of Alaki. Uh, the guards, one of them eyes you sort of sideways and almost surprised to see you return after your evening spent in the woods. Shrugs and all of you pass through. The town is as it always is. <laughs> um, quiet. Dreary. So we just hitting up the blue... Blue water, we uh what time is it? What time of day. Uh you know it's always difficult to tell with the uh the overcast yep. sky, but yeah, you venture with the time it took to get across the lake. It's probably right around noon. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk to the talk to the elves first. Might as well get that out of the way. Yeah. Not a bad idea. And Cole? Go talk yeah. to the fucking priest. Yeah, just with that attitude, I want to say no. I mean, it's that, or you go with him and you guys end up killing each other. Uh, you, no, have fun. No guarantees I won't kill you yet either. Whatever. Sounds like Durango, are you going with to the El Priesto? My friend, I uh, do not spend any more time inside of the buildings of the Holy than I have to. Uh, it is a, a natural <laughs> affliction, you'll see, and he kind of gestures to his infernally influenced form. I shall join you to see the elves. Hmm? This sounds much like a much better time. Well, then I can. You're going with him to the elves. I'll go with Cole to the church. We probably shouldn't. Yes. Each other too short. Clean your, you see uh, this? Clean your he, of... he worries for you. <laughs> this is, this is a, how do you say, heart warming? Good bonding time for everybody. <sighs> and he just starts marching his way towards the, <laughs> the end of town, the elves rat. Be in the gates before dark. He flips him off over his shoulder. And Durango walks backward for a moment as he takes a bow and, you know, turns with a flourish. You know how old it is. It's a north so you, you make yeah. your way back uh, along that western stretch of road, the old Sfalic that runs through straight through the town, uh, Tensveta, Durango. You make your you you venture outside the city gates once more and follow that uh, light dirt path through the through the woods towards the Elven and Vistani camp. Cole and Ash, you are going to the church? Yep. Fortunately. Okay. So let's resolve that first. Um, it's closer, right? So it's the two of you. Um, again, you get the, the finger over your shoulders. They head towards the gate, and you turn to enter the um, gated and is the stone church. Um, 
again quickly as you enter uh, as you enter the the, the, the gated area um, you see uh, Ismark open the door and and smile warmly and sort of note note the expression and Uh, everything all right, my friends. I thought you were going to come uh, seek our aid the other morning, and then we heard nothing. So, yeah, plans changed a little bit. Uh, as they as they do, uh, but uh, were you able to acquire what you were looking for? Uh, not quite. Um, what do you know about this mad mage over there across the across the lake? I know stories. I mean, uh, no one has seen him in some time, but uh, I know that originally he started in Barovia, spouting all kinds of uh, uh, platitudes about how a, the, you know, the one, one, uh, destitute lord could not keep him or the people trapped inside this land and he was very uh, <laughs> very sure of himself at the time uh, led many foolhardy villagers to their death unfortunately um, attempting to fight with Strahd in his castle of all places is there anybody around or still around from when he originally got here um, none that would know uh, of him intimately. He kept to himself. He did not even stay at the inn, to be honest with you. He uh, uh, often would disappear. So, like, when he came in, he was, like, he didn't, you know, he didn't say, like, hey, I signed up for, you know, Bob's anti-vampire extravaganza or anything like that? I don't, I don't recall, unfortunately. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just and seems like... Asaz and all the way back to Barovia. Anywhere you think it would be town records we could check out? You know, people signing in to the Blue Water, maybe? Long book. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that he would have made his way to Valaki. He was in Barovia and then um, uh, gathered some forces there, but... Uh, it was over a year ago. I don't. I don't know anyone that would uh, have any record of his name. I mean, this sort of thing happens frequently. You must understand. Yeah. Uh, the last I heard, uh, <laughs> just heard stories of him skulking around the, uh, the northern shore of the lake here. Well, we found him. He's just. Uh, I don't think he really knew who he was. He kept asking what his name was, so we thought maybe reminded him, maybe it might, you know, snap him. Well, they don't call him the Mad Mage of uh, Mount Baratok for nothing, eh? Yeah, it's definitely true. You know, hard Just... to say, honestly, even if it is the same person. Oh, well, yeah. Fried the hell out of coal, so... Hey, look at this. And you see, you know, and I kind of show off the front of my arm, and you see this big, like, you know, electrical singed outline where the bolt just, like, hit center mass. Jesus, you have to learn to, uh, strafe. Serpentine. Yeah, no, it's fairly quick. <laughs> oh, come on, Cole, for the, for the, for the famous Sir Cole Maven. Listen, when I say I couldn't do it, it's just difficult, all right? <laughs> As Durango tells it, you are you are quite apt at uh, uh, avoiding all kinds of danger. <laughs> I uh, jest, of course. Of course. Sorry, I'm tr trying to lighten the mood. Yeah, it's uh, it's difficult. Eh? All sorts of uh, yeah. We're sort of learning learning the ropes here as we go, and it's um, yeah, it's been difficult. And draining. Yeah, draining, right? Yeah. Well, this land has that effect on you. It takes your your hopes and 
squashes them quickly. We have seen many uh, strangers or foreigners come, and some some are noisy in execution. Others fade away into the woods. Yeah, but if you're like me, you don't have any hopes to begin with, so nothing to get crushed. Makes life simple. Eh, hey, it's, it's a little morbid, mate. Yeah, well, well, yes, it was a little dark, even for <laughs> even for by Barovian standards. Hey, that's life. Gets dark sometimes. Uh, Ash, I have seen you. I have seen you in combat. There is something out there you are uh, fighting for. You just uh, are not aware of it. I mean, usually it's money. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a pretty good motivation, honestly. How is that going? Have you been paid well? Uh, yeah. And yet you fight on. I would, uh... do a little bit of self-reflection. Yeah, when I find But I, I, I'm sure you did not come here to, uh, be, uh, berated by Ismark. Uh... <laughs> What can we do for you? That was mostly it. We was, was finding a... Uh, trying to find information on the wizard, yeah? Tens wanted him to pray. I'm still 50 <sighs> on 50 of whether or not that's actually going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's just like some time. I will tell you if this was months ago, I would have been right there with you. But now, seeing power and bones, I don't know. Perhaps something does leak through the fog. Paul just sort of stands there and kind of, you know, momentarily you see like a, like a, like a thousand yard stare and kind of snaps himself out of it. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but it's been a while. We ain't had a decent meal in at least 24 hours. I think the blue bottle might be calling. Yeah. I was going to say, you don't want to eat here. No, mate. Uh, no, I ain't no <laughs> eating no bones. Listen, the vegetables are fine. The boy does a good job in the garden, but uh, my sister does many things. A good cook is not one of them. Wow, that's a, uh, a real selling point. <laughs> you know? Why don't we, uh, why don't we just advertise that? Maybe Strav will, you know? I think his appetites lie elsewhere. Yeah, well, that's why most guys put up with bad cooking. Hmm. I think he might have someone to cook for him, mate. I'm just hey, Lord Ships. Mood now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Ismark. Uh, glad to see you safe. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be speaking soon, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. If you ever need my sword, you'll know where to find me. We uh, we may soon. Um, I'll come back to the church later. Yeah, if there's something I might. I want to talk to you about. Of course. And so, um, turning around, he waves and shakes your hand. Uh, you know, one of those Hercules handshakes um, before you make your way back and head down to the blue water. Uh, for Tensfeta and Durango, uh, the journey is gloomy, wet, muddy. You've come accustomed to it at this, at this point. Uh, Durango constantly utilizing that prestidigitation to keep the mud off your boots uh, as you trudge through the um, the dark forest, following the winding paths, mostly small hunting trails, down to the Vistani camp. It takes you roughly an hour of walking. Is there anything you're going to talk about on your on the way there, or are we just headed directly to it? 
I think at some point trudging, will probably trudging just... along in silence. Yeah, I think the only thing that'll happen is that at some point Tens will literally just look at at Durango and just go, "Stop cleaning my fucking boots." I would recommend, my friend, that you get several feet further away, for I will not have your filthy boots near me. Now, as I was saying, it is important that the bridge for your instrument is made from a high-quality bone. You cannot accept anything else of a lesser quality. And he continues to, to <sighs> ramble on about the finer points of his instrument. Well, I appreciate wood. <laughs> Overly jovial, despite the, the, the rain and the muck. Like, almost, almost just to, just to piss Tens off. Mm, mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. You didn't get a lot of that from him. Just mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I know. I'm aware of how wood works. A friction tuner, I said, for the great Durango Fortescue. <laughs> Dwarven gears, my friend, or nothing? <sighs> mm-hmm. So after roughly, we'll say an hour and a half of that. Um... <laughs> You uh, you arrive at the uh, the camp. The Vistani uh, greet you they, it, uh, uh, warmly before you make your way to the the dusk cells. Those those two or three elves sit outside. They are they seem to be playing cards uh, at a small stop. table. I'm gonna turn to Durango before we go inside. And I'm gonna go. Maybe you ought to go uh, speak with uh, the Vistani. Yeah, you, you'll regale them with story, and maybe you might get an answer too. Hmm. Mr. Tens, I thought in this regard we could be the most effective team. Hmm? Please, please, please go talk to them. And my friend, what of you? Shall you have a have some fun in the woods by yourself in the, in the muck? Hmm? I can clean my own boots. First off, second, the things that we'll be talking about are probably beyond your understanding. My friend, I find that both hard to believe. And he just goes inside. <laughs> or at least tries to. Uh, sure, the guards nod at you as you as the two of you enter. They barely really give you any regard. Um as the two of you you push in, Casimir is um standing. Uh again, this this small space, right? Kind of sort of carved into the side of this hill. Uh, maybe uh, you know, thirty feet across. By by ten feet, right? Very small uh, structure. Um, and as you enter in, he's he's putting a book back on the shelves. And he turns. And he says, "Oh, sounds better." Hello. I'm surprised to see you so soon. How um, uh, have you made your way to the temple already? No. Though we will soon. Okay. I have questions. And you're one of the oldest here in this area. What do you know about the Mad Mage? I feel like I've asked you this before, but my mind, it slips in my mind. Yes. Uh, uh, unfortunately, um, we, we know very little. Uh, you know, his uh, incursion uh, was yet another in a stream of effects that um, occurred post ours, and we had, um, as you are quite aware, wanted very little involvement right. uh, with, any, with, with any sort of uh, uprising. Um, I never met the gentleman myself. I, I thought, to be honest, it was um, a child's myth to explain lightning striking the, the shore. The reality is the thought of him pulling anything out of that lake alive is, uh, it has not happened in quite some time. Right. Did you ever catch his name? I did not, unfortunately. Again, I had no workings with the man. Do you have... You're, you're much more skilled than I am in this. Do you have any way to get his name? Any sort of divination? He sort of grabs another book off the shelf and starts um, flipping through the uh, flipping through the pages uh, it's so we met him this morning early 
He came in as a stag, turned me into a rabbit, uh, struck lightning into a friend of mine, um, argued with himself, uh, and I happened to reach into his mind uh, and uh, heard nothing but jumbles, and he constantly asked, what is my name, what is my name? So we have a hunch, at least Cole did, perhaps, if you would just fucking use the scroll, that perhaps if we give him his name, he will be able to actually, you know, think clearly. I don't have anything backing that up. It's just something that somebody else said. So, when you reached into his, his mind, um, it, did it seem as if he knew who no one was? It was a complete lack of memory, or was it just a jumble? It, it was just madness with him. Just a constant stream of... Well, first off, he's very talented as a mage. He makes my little marbles look like bubbles, which, you know, they are, but that's beside the point. Um, uh, he, uh... The amount of information that he was constantly pouring through was beyond what a normal mind could handle. Some of it was jumbled, some of it not so much. I don't know if you would call this a curse, if you would call this just pure insanity, but... I mean, from an arcane standpoint, um, Intense Vet, I want you make an arcana check with, uh, with advantage. Okay. As the two of you start to look through, um, several of the tomes, um, Got a that he, that he pulls out. 19? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and, and as the two of you begin to look through many of the books, you're looking for... You know, suddenly it strikes you, okay, maybe maybe not the source. Let's look for things that could potentially cause this type of thing to happen. Right. And, and there are several, right? You, you come across uh, a few spells that are incredibly complex. Right. And any anything dealing with, with memory is incredibly complex. You look at, like, modify memory, um, even some maybe cleverly worded Geis hmm. or Geish, whatever, however you want to pronounce that. Gaius. Gaius. Yeah. Um, and uh, the only the only one, the other one you can see, which is just is seems again just beyond anything. You know, you either you or Casimir, you both look at it, but it's uh, mind blank. Do I know the the intricacies of it based off of the book? Uh, you know that they're they're all very very complicated and well beyond your capabilities at this point. Um, and many of the mathematical workings and and weave manipulation required um, are incredibly difficult. Um, mind blanks seem to be the most difficult of all of them. Um, and there's even some mention in one of the tomes that it even wish spells. are little use to restore the mind after it has been altered. Or to actually even gain or garner information about the target. Right. Well, this is troubling, to say the least. Um, my only... Surely, my, my thought is this. Beyond this, while I understand that this is <sighs> difficult, the weave doesn't forget. To remove something from the weave is 
incredibly blatant. Is there any way you could ask the weaves outright for an answer? Any sort of any sort of divination? Um, I mean, they are scrying. You could uh, appeal to a celestial nature, although I will tell you, um, celestial entities seem to struggle um, here. But um, short of that, um, no, unfortunately. Unless you have access to some sort of wish spell and you wish to understand, but even then it you know, seems like there are ways around that. And good luck finding it, I've never even seen it written down. What did you attempt? Nothing, really, other than just trying to talk to him. Even after I told him to use the fucking scroll. <laughs> <clears throat> I will offer you this. Um, bear in mind, as, as powerful as this mage was, um, I would also remind you that Strahd, too, is a wizard of incredible power. Again, much like us, he has had many lifetimes to study the arcane. So it's quite possible that it could be something beyond what we understand. It could be a curse of some sort. This whole land seems to be cursed. Again, I think your best bet, if, if anything, will be found at the Amber Temple. It's the only place that seems to possess any significant knowledge or power outside of <laughs> Ravenloft itself. Can I inside check that? Uh, go ahead. I was actually about to turn to Durango and be like, what are your thoughts on this? It's a uh, 19. Uh, with a 19, yeah, you feel he is very, very genuine. Very genuine, honest. It's nothing. And elves are difficult to read in general, right? Because, like he just finished saying, they've had a lifetime of practice in uh, deception and, and court. Um, the Dusk Elves, though, aren't like many of the elves that you've ever met before. They're unlike Tensveta or any that you met um, at the at Bard College or, uh, or, or in your travels. You know, they are uh, very down-to-earth for immortal creatures and there is a, a bit of sadness to him that never seems to escape um even now this this there's very little hope or um passion in his voice or that echoes through or reverberates but you believe he's being genuine and honest he's not he actually the amber temple seems to be at least where a significant amount of knowledge is held. Well, Mr. Tent, it would appear that our friend has uh, offered some very valuable advice. At least now we have a direction. Maybe. And tell me, my friend, uh, besides this Amber Temple, is there anyone you could think that... Uh, might have some insight on this on this predicament. Uh, perhaps someone else of, of, of arcane uh, standing. But arcane standing, no. Um, Strahd does not uh, abide any that would potentially um, rival him in that nature. He used to have um, a wizard that um, did work for him. His name is escaping me at the moment. It was. Um, Oh. I'm completely lost now, but he had um, he'd worked closely with Strahd. 
helped tutor him on things. They worked together, and then suddenly, as Strahd had no more use for him, he seemed to vanish. Mm. If only you had a spell that could give you a name. <laughs> hmm. Hey, well, you know. I'm sorry, that was cheeky of me. A couple more Thank centuries, you. and maybe you can create one. I have another stop to make uh, <laughs> before the evening is done. Thank you, Casimir. Yeah, of course. Um, would you mind if I come and just study through your books uh, this evening? Uh, my doors, of course, always open. I appreciate um, it. Uh, will you be staying the evening? I will have a, uh, a bed prepared for you. Oh, for that, that'll be no need. <laughs> I'll just... I, I will tell you, even even for us the uh, okay good all right I was going to say uh, I wouldn't venture out at night but um, uh, of course and and uh, I, you know I'm more than happy to accompany all of you to the to the temple if need be but noted um, mm. it was um, She also believes it is, is the best path, of course, you understand. Right. Mm. Uh, but good luck. Durango, was it? Well, yes, my friend, the great yes. Durango Fortescue at your service. It's a pleasure, a pleasure to meet you again. Durango bows very deeply, you know, with a with flourish of the cape, very, very theatric. Kind of hard to pull off in the small confines, but he makes it look good. <laughs> Tins just rolls his eyes and I'll see you this evening. Yes, of course. All right, and as you all make your way, uh, the two of you make your way back outside the yeah, yeah back towards town. Okay. Um, he's gonna just like it, 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 Tins is obviously deep in thought just kind of like pouring over the thoughts that like the things that they've talked about with Casimir and kind of the different things that they went through book wise and uh, he'll just say you know maybe there's something with Van Richten perhaps he'll have a better answer I'm not ready to go to the temple yet I don't think it's wise granted we'll be able to take him with us but and we could take Ismark as well but. We shall have quite a merry band, Mr. Retains, huh? We'll have a band. <laughs> the band back together. And you said you had another stop to be making this evening? Did you mean aside from uh, rejoining our companions at the Blue Water Room? I do want to see if they got anything at the temple. Uh, see if... How far was it to, Van, uh, to the tower from Velaki, it was a half day, right? You muted. Yeah, sorry, correct. Uh, yeah, it was roughly, we'll say, uh, it's about three miles. Didn't he travel. say that he was getting out of there, though? Yeah, he did. The last time we talked we to him, he was saying he was leaving. We can still go check the rest of the... We can go still check out the tower break into his house. That's Tin's thoughts. Which is more or less what he's going to talk about with you guys at the... Okay, well... <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let RP happen, I guess. Fine, whatever. Play the damn game. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, so another hour or so of trudging through the, uh, the muddy, wooded... Um, area outside of the town those walls loom up again and you, you walk through at this point now it is roughly um it, it's getting close to evening the the sun somewhere behind the uh overcast sky is uh making its way westward uh and taking on that sort of orangey purplish tinge that it does as it gets closer and closer to the horizon um getting dark earlier and earlier as the seasons seem to change in this land outside of time 
you make your way back through town and enter the blue water. Uh, Cole and Ash, what are you doing when they arrive? Uh, in the time that it would have taken them to get back, I would have liked to talk to... Um, so you have roughly three hours. Yeah, talk to the, the innkeeps and, and see if they know anything about the Mad Mage. Same questions. No, uh, Danica has, has, has regained her composure and, and uh, you know, once again, um, uh, dealing with the her, her daily duties, but uh, she says no. And in, in particular, they even, despite their efforts, whoever he is, is incredibly good at hiding who he is um in even hiding himself there he just seems to come and go he appears and vanishes and he's very hard for even them to uh get a beat on well uh keep an eye out for an elk that's how he snuck up on us how he uh well um you know we've seen him as an elk um um a turtle um <laughs> a, a bat a, a, a hawk i mean he seems to um Choose whatever form he wishes. And whatever is most troublesome and convenient. I'm sorry, troublesome and convenient. Sorry, I forgot her accent for a minute. That's fine. I grief does weird things to you. Oh. <laughs> it's changed me. It's changed me. It changed me to my core. Oh. Yeah, right, Paul is not asking any of these questions. He's already got his face in, in, in a plate. Actually, this is probably his second plate. He's pretty hungry. Um, you know, and just generally beat up on the table, picking out his teeth. Oh, hey, he's is, your, <laughs> is your friend all right? Hey, Ranga. I mean, I was Ash. Oh, I was talking oh, to Ash about. Sorry. Well, okay. Well, I'll dress you then, Cole. Um, everything all right? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, you've been, you've been here for hours, and I, I haven't once heard about uh, how great you are or uh, some courageous story or... Um... Well, I, I could entertain you, but relatively, I ain't nothing major and new. It's been a bunch of misses lately. We're on dress duty. Uh, sort of kicking dirt around. But I promise you, the next epic battle we get into... You'll be the first to know. Uh, well, probably not the first, but one well, of a probably. few. Probably. Rango was all spreading it as soon as he's heard it. You know, he's, as soon as he's written it. You know, I've seen uh, quite a few faces come and go in my time. I really hope uh, hope you all manage to do what it is you're setting out to do. I know it's a hard thing to have, and we've seen it many times, but I don't know. <laughs> what are we without hope, eh? Yeah, imagine it's pretty important out here. She grabs, um, your, she grabs your wine, <laughs> like what's left of it, slams it back, and then goes back to get you another. <laughs> and another life I marry, eh? Yeah. <laughs> pretty solid lady. Ash is just going to be... Unless directly interacted with, Ash is just going to be nursing a cup of wine until sleep time. I don't anything else for you. Okay. A few hours and several, several beverages and a good amount of food later. Um, the other two arrive, the doors swing open... You feel you hear the familiar strum of uh, Durango fiddling with his lute as he grand, grandiosely enters. Hello again, my friends. It is, of course, I, the great Durango Fortescue, here to amaze and scintillate once again. And just sits down at the table, obviously deep in thought. Oh, good. That went about as well as I could have hoped. Hello again, my friends. How was your uh, visit to the church? 
and Durango just kind of reaches over Cole's shoulder and skewers like a piece of meat on his fingernail from his plate and just pops it into his mouth like very casually. Uh, Cole very casually slides the second plate over that he had already prepared for Durango. Durango, you know, gives him a good clap on the shoulder and sits down to tug in. Steals a piece of meat back. We didn't find nothing on it. Think anything useful? Can you ask the morning lord? Yeah. That's the priest. Well, we talked to Ismark, and Ismark gave us the impression that ain't no one gonna know it. Hey, that wasn't Danica. the point. That was not the point. You were not sent there to do that. You were sent there. Are to you see not if you sending me anywhere? You want to talk about it, mate? Mate, I already gave you the option. Pretty soon, I'm not going to give you the option. You don't oh, you boss like you around the great before. Cole Maven. You understand? You better do that thing where you transform into some fucking of a season before it gets ugly, yeah? <sighs> Ash scoots his plate off the table and was holding it. And Drago's watching with rapt fascination. Goal. Skewers a potato. Takes a chunk out of it. Well, without worrying about Cole for a second, you always got to plan what's yours, Tens. Customer seems to think that there's an answer at the temple, the Ember Temple. He's willing to go with us. Figure we could probably get at least Ismark on our side on that one. But uh, I was actually thinking about going to Van Richten's and seeing if there's anything left up in that tower. He obviously, the wizard obviously knew who, knew of the one that was there before. Maybe the same thing could be said for uh, the reverse. At the very least, we could, you know, practice our break-in skills. In digging through the tombs, Mr. Tins, and you and our friend came to the conclusion that this sounded like a case of a, a mind wipe spell, yes? Was that uh, the name? Close. Though I don't know that it's a complete and total conclusion. Mind blank. Nothing really gets rid of it except for a wish. So, I understand. If we know there's a place, it probably has the information we want. Why are we going to go somewhere else? Why don't we just go there? Let's talk about the things that we... Do you remember what we've heard about the Amber Temple? And how far away it fucking is? Do you want to have to guide somebody else all the way out into the middle of the mountains to go for this? Who we also guide? Ismark? He can handle himself. Ismark and the wizard. We got attacked by werewolves on the street. On the roads. Mate, we're not talking the wizard nowhere. What you talking about? Not the one that's out in the middle of the woods. I'm talking about the one that's the elf. <laughs> Mr. Tens, your concern is unwarranted. There is no safer place than on the road than beside the great Durango Fortescue. And of course, the brave circle Maven. Uh-huh. Sure. Mate. Look, I'd rather you know, be you prepared know, it's, than not. It's, it's cool to be prepared, mate. It's fine. But it seems you're just doing things a bit backwards. I understand you're some sort of investigator as far as I've gathered. All right? So you're investigating, okay? But if someone gave you a lead, they say, you're going to get information here, most likely. Would you bugger off and go elsewhere? Only... I thought it might be worth it. Every time. That temple's not going anywhere. Yeah, neither is that tower. So, tower's closer as well. Hit the tower. Oh, we could even go by the Wizard of Wines and see what's left. Um, would we remember how there. far away the temple was? Uh, you, I mean, you don't really know, like, exactly. Right, like and, and we the, get there within the, a week, and there. Yeah, I mean, yes, I mean, it's it's only you know maybe two days. Uh, the uh, realistically, 
Um, the problem is it's not it's not like it's overly far. It's just that the country itself is difficult to travel. You guys are mostly traveling on foot. You know, even horses are slow because of the muddy, rainy nature of the place. Um, you, as you were told, there is a quicker way to get to the Amber Temple, but it is traveling through following the river south through the remains of that flooded town of Berez. Oh yeah, we don't even know what we're going to find there. Which would be like this way, right? You'd have to go, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. You'd have to go like this way. And then... Or you're going all the way around, you know what I mean? Yeah, if we're going to do that, we were better off probably hitting on the way back. Um, but if you're going to do that, the, you know, Van Richten's or, the, or that tower, I should say Van Richten's, but that tower isn't far, you know? There's nothing wrong with being prepared. It's my only thought. Mate, you ain't wrong. But it just seems it's extra work, yeah? Might be it doesn't quicker. feel like extra. And you can fucking stay here and sleep. Yeah? Yeah, Nicole's, Nicole is very quickly losing his patience. Yeah, just eat a potato. Listen, here's the way I look at it, because at this point, I'm tired of the married couple here. Uh, if you don't give a flying fart where we go or what we do is what I can kind of tell but you'd rather do less work all the time I said mate can... the tens I agree with them it I don't know if we're gonna find anything the thing had two floors more or less it had the all the crap that we slept in one night and all the stuff that you dug through already and then the one floor that had the guy's office in it right the office of the guy who's been here long enough to know things. The one guy that was able to hide his entire everything else just as well as this wizard has. Just as much as this mage has. You don't know what's up there. That's my point. None of us know what is up there. Yeah, but the guy that can hide his stuff so well that nobody even knows he's here, you think he's going to leave something on a bookshelf in a tower that anybody can get into? Well, considering that not anybody can get into it, not just anybody can get into it, does not mean that anybody can get into it. I we were able to get into it because I'm not a fucking moron. The average person is a moron. And he can just kind of like flippantly, unintentionally flicks his wrist towards Cole. Uh, Cole's going to get up and deck him. <laughs> Hit me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make an attack roll. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, what is it plus, uh, plus my strength? D20 mm -hmm. plus, plus strength. Sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. With proficiency. Oh, yeah. Too. Oh, where, what's my proficiency? Uh, plus okay, thank you. Oh, well, three. Uh, <laughs> five. So that's a nine. Unfortunately, that's going to miss. Yeah, that was a really yeah. bad roll. That was a two. <laughs> hours, yeah. Hours of drinking. You uh, you stand up and just, you know, go go to... A, it, what, what starts is almost like a swing, kind of turns into almost a grab. Uh, and you, uh, Tensveta, seeing the, seeing the swing coming, you push the chair back and sort of lean backwards out of its way before you... Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the rest to you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> How big is the room? The blue water? Mm hmm I mean, I guess I'll throw a battle map up if you guys want. <laughs> yeah, we might need it. <laughs> this is juicy. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get let me get it going. Let me get me there. 
You gotta get me over there. <laughs> there you go. All right. Is there anything at an angle uh, going upward from the table across kind of in... Oh, nope. we'll say. Let's see. What do you think Nope, that, uh, the up, that banister, like, upstairs is there. Like, so the, like, the floor really is, is, is about it. Uh, I need a con save from... Uh, from Cole, please. Fair thing. Well, I mean, I think if we're going to go that route, mm -hmm. uh, we should probably roll initiative. Okay. Sorry. Do the, other two, do the other two plan on getting in on this? <laughs> yeah, let's, why don't we all roll just for funsies? I mean, Ashley ain't stepping in quite yet. Durango kind of seems like he's the guy that would, you know, trip you when you're not looking. True. And judging by that initiative roll, he's been waiting for this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ash, there's two um, Ashes and two Ryan. Uh, yeah, two I don't know why mine rolled twice. Yeah, my right, first well, roll I mean, was there, a twelve. There, yeah, I'll, I'll get them. I'll just get rid of all of them there. There we go. It's because you guys are on the second floor as well. Oh, oh <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> All right, uh, so Durango, you see, you see, Cole get up and sort of swing grab at um, at uh, Tensveta, and he pushes himself away. How's the lighting in here? Um, it is uh, evening, so I would say uh, relatively soft. The there is some light coming in from the windows outside, but for the mo but it's uh, the candles are lit, so it's uh, dim. Dim, okay. Uh, seeing seeing this about to unfold, Durango just turns to to Ash with a smile, raises his wine glass, downs the rest, sets it down, and just disappears. Ah, shit. <laughs> That's my turn. Perfect. Ash, are you doing anything? Uh, I am going to go ahead and back up to and basically start clearing out tables and stuff. Uh, Ash is going to spend most of his next turns back in tables and chairs out of the way, trying to preserve as much of Danica's bar as possible. Game is paused. Tins uh, yep. pulls out a marble, crushes it in hand, and blows it at uh, Cole. And I need a con save from Cole. Okay. Wow, the terrible rolls. That's a five. You're going to take 12 points of cold damage as he uses frost fingers and your drinks all freeze to the table as he just and then as he does, he gets up and he's going to, can he see out the door? Well, he can actually see out the window. So he's just going to use his face step to step outside. Just here. Here's fine. Okay. Is that sudden that sudden chill sets in and you watch the the, the drinks all freeze on the table and that, that wood turn like white uh, all the way up in that you know, wherever that dust uh touched. Tens of it just <laughs> And he knocks he knocks on the window and just goes Out here. And then steps over to the by the well and just pulls the sunblade like hilt out. Cole. 
I said Cold. a fist fight. Oh, is Elf's gonna get it? Um, yeah, I'll go outside. <laughs> oh. uh, it's 20 feet. 25 right in front of him. And he's, the is very lucky Cole isn't taking out his, his spear after that, but. Now, <laughs> now outside, and squared up. Yeah. Mate, you're gonna regret this. And, uh, yeah. Hit the button. Uh, all right, don't screw me again. <clears throat> what? At eight, uh, 11, uh, 15 to hit? Miss. Yeah, because I keep rolling like absolute, <laughs> absolute balls. The one second, second I want to fight the yeah, elf. Yeah, again, if you were drinking, you were drinking here by yourself for three hours, right? So. And the elf is quicker than you, than, than you anticipated. He, he just, uh, you know, and and again, despite the fact that, uh, you know, you are serious for whatever reason, you know, you didn't draw your spear and that just that that thought in the back of your mind is you see the sun sword in his hand. Um, you go in, you square up and you go to throw another punch and he just manages to just duck out of the way. You do have an extra attack. Oh, I always forget about that. You know, you should have reminded me. Uh, I didn't I actually know that applied. <laughs> I actually didn't know that applied to like unarmored. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Unarmed, yeah, yeah unarmed, just like anything it's else. Just another attack. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah, I'll take my extra attack. Just the damage. Just me twice. You just need to roll a nine or higher, and you can hit me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's impossible. Go ahead and throw, to throw, throw a seventeen plus. Throw a, throw a plus, smite behind it if you want. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen plus a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> I see. Yeah. 16, so second. So. Yeah. Second attack hit. So the first one he dodges, but. Uh, and, and again, it catches you a little off guard, but you've, you know, you've years of years of training and bar fights. You just, uh, you quickly pivot on your, on your right foot, bringing, bringing one, that, that gloved fist up into his stomach and tends to, you suddenly feel the, the wind get, uh, just pushed out of you as, as this, uh, gauntleted fist rams into your rib cage. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's just one plus your strike modifier. Yep. Okay. So yeah, that is, uh, five points of damage. And uh, uh, it's Cole's gonna take his fist back just like an inch, and then hit the divine smite and do like a one-inch punch on him. All right, roll the damage. Uh, That's twelve wow. points of damage. Okay. Yeah. So after after you've you coiled over, and I, like I say, just roll my hand back. It's a little bit, and like lie down elf before it gets ugly, and ram back into the same spot, but kind of dig in deeper and. <sighs> Perfect. All right. Yeah. So it's that second, that second strike not only knocks the wind out of you, but it it burns as it hits. You feel this sort of sickly divine energy just just crack, forcing all the air out of your lungs. Uh, Durango, invisible. <laughs> Durango reappears exactly where he disappeared. Watches everybody, everybody leave, and kind of gives a little nod over to Danica before he follows the party outside. He she just does shakes not her head. Tend to miss this. Uh, yeah, he's just gonna keep his distance and, and watch for now. Right. Ash, I'm gonna turn over to Danica. Uh, I don't know if you guys got any sort of doctor or anything in town, but if you uh, <laughs> send for him, I think we might need him. And then, yeah, I'm just going to go stand in the doorway. All right, Tensveta. Tens is going to, like, look up while the fist is still down there. You feel big. My I warned you. And then I'm going to bring out the sun sword and fucking crack him with a booming blade. You're using weapons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's a 15. It's a yeah. miss. It's a miss. As he like like spins it out it, and he goes to strike and he just like hits that gauntleted fist and just. <sighs> 
Yeah, Cole, yeah. I mean, Cole would probably just, like, bring it up and, like, grab your arm and, and say his comment about weapons. Yeah. Yeah, despite the fact that you've seen him fight Tenzveta, he, he, not only is he relatively quick, quicker than you give him credit for in that armor, but that, that, that grip is like a vice around your wrist. I took a bonus action to bring out the Sun Sword, so that's my turn. Yeah. And he's just gonna, like, as his hand's there, he's like, he feels strong. Cole. Uh, with his hand still in mine, uh, I'm gonna use my action to restrain him. And just. He's actually, can I, like, do uh, the use item? I've got a set of manacles that I'd really love to use right now. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do it all in one go. Okay. Uh, so, you have to restrain uh, probably... him first. Yeah. Grapple. So yeah, so it's just yeah, a, yeah. yeah grappling. So yeah, it's just a just a const just a strength off. Wow, that's a really 18. good. Really good roll. Natural twenty, oh, bitch. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Do you, you know what happens on a natural twenty, right? Uh, not for a grapple. No, for a grapple. I have no idea. So essentially, well, go ahead and describe what you're trying to do. Well, with his fist already in my hand, I'm gonna take it, bring him in, and kind of spin him around, and I'm gonna give him like this, like sort of reverse crushing bear hug, and like right underneath the ribs, so it's a little hard to breathe. So that's it, right? So you put him into essentially, um, as you you twist his arm around uh, and restrain him, you essentially get him in a chokehold. What's your constitution? Mine? Chuck? Yeah. Mine is a 12. 12? So, so you get a 1? Get a plus 1. Yep. Yeah. So you have one round of breath. Okay. All right. I know it's Unless coming next, escape. but... Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you know, yeah, no, I know what you're going to do, but... <laughs> well, what does face step require? Is it only verbal? It's nothing. It's it's an 8. Yeah, 13. Okay. Uh, I have three uses of it. All right. Durango. Durango is just like playing theme music at this point <laughs> and then watching Fuck you dude <laughs> it, it sounds awesome like it's a very well selected rift even choking for breath you can recognize that he gets a finger <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's my turn all right ash you doing anything hey Durango you got anything uh I could stop one of them if either one of these guys takes it too far. <laughs> oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rash, please leave this to Durango. Um, but Play in the, the meantime... Riff. <laughs> Play the fight riff. <laughs> Damn it, I have nothing close by with which to play the fight riff. <laughs> That's a serious oversight. Um, next time. We'll get him next time. Ash is just going to take out two two arrows and just kind of have them in hand. Just have them ready. And that, <laughs> yeah, that, that'll that'll be my turn. I'll probably walk over yonder and uh, stand against one of the fence posts so I'm not uh, in the way. Probably over by Durango. Okay. And that'll be it. All right, tens. As your your eyes go wide for a second, is 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 cold. It's completely, uh, you know, it twists you up, and all of a sudden you feel the air start to it, you're choking to breathe. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, we all know what's coming. Yeah, do it. Uh, he pulls he pulls another marble from his uh, from his pouch, and just tosses it to the ground, and he's gonna cast fog cloud. Can you do that? Wait, well? what are the yeah? What are the uh, what are the components? Verbal somatic. Would you be able to make a somatic while you're restrained? I don't. Ha if I have my hands open. And can you? And can you make a verbal while you're choking? I have a one round of breath. That's a, that's, that's a good point. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah. You just can't move. Essentially, you can't get zero speed. Yep. Okay. And I'm giving you the choke because of the natural twenty. Yep. And uh, I'll use my face step to get out of it into the cloud on the other side of the wall. As a bonus action. And then he's just going to stand there. 
and not say a fucking word as the area fills with uh, fog. You thought Barovia was foggy on its own. All of a sudden, that 20-foot area around all of you, just, just the fog just begins to rise and choke all of you. It just, it just permeates. And, and suddenly, uh, even, even as close as you are to Durango, Ash, it becomes difficult to see. Ash just reaches out and puts his hand on Durango. So I don't <laughs> lose you. Yep, a six-fingered hand claps him on the hand on his shoulder. And I had options. <laughs> not, not with a fog cloud, though. Well, it's your turn, Cole. Suddenly, everything around you just vanishes in the fog. Well, I was going to say this to heal you after this, mate, but uh, I'm going to cast Detect Magic. I'm looking for the Sun Sword. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nice indeed. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, I dropped it out of state. No, I'm just kidding. Well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So as you you cast detect magic, you see uh, directly, uh, I guess, in front of you um, that glow through the through the haze, through the fog. Uh, and you see obviously more, a couple other uh, glows next to you, but you could you, you know you knew that you knew where the other two were standing. So you see that one. That one's a different one, I guess. Um. Let's see. So. Uh, there is the fence there that I would, you know, I know there's a fence. I've been on the property. Um, would I be able to climb that and get to him with my movement? Climb what? Like, there not there an outer fence to this, this yard? Uh, it's not a fence. It's the, the building is, like, overhead. So it's, oh, like, it's an, the, overhead. an overhead. Yep. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go right. Uh, right over. And, uh, just sort of, um... It might you ain't getting away. Um, with uh, do I need an action to cat? Oh, where's my? Cast a spell. Okay, so uh, expeditious retreat. Um, you have to not to cast it though. The original casting is an action, is it not? No, it's a, it's a bonus. I'm pretty sure it's a bonus action all the way around. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to cast ex Expedition. Well, it says when you cast the spell and then as a bonus action on each of your turns afterwards. Oh, no, it's, it says one bonus action. Yeah, yeah it's okay. One, it's one bonus action. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to cast uh, Expeditious Retreat because he's not getting away from me again. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> it says you, as you, so as you cast that spell, your legs, sort of like the muscles, just... Um, sort of, sort of tighten and, and expand a bit in the armor, and all of a sudden you feel like your legs are just uh, more powerful than they were before. So you, you get this sort of speed, this burst of speed. Um, but yep. So uh, out of the fog, you, you know, it tends you, you, you sort of sit there and, and just you peel your eyes through it, looking for any sign of movement. Pretty confident that you know, you know, he, he, Cole's going to be stumbling around for a bit when suddenly it's just his form just appears right in front of you. You have your action. Uh, he doesn't cast. Act, he, no. he, he cast the tech magic. Yeah. Right. Durango. Where did Durango go here? He was like right here, right here, somewhere in there. Yeah. Either way, Durango is just like following and watching. Uh, he starts plucking away on the mandolin. Kind of, kind of focused on the uh, the inlay on the fretboard for a moment, and suddenly, uh, yeah, cold, cold disappears. Cast Does that require a line of sight or touch? Does it say a creature you can see? It a is creature you touch, touch. It says. Yeah. Touch. Yeah. Okay. So you don't, so, you can't currently see cold. He is obscured in the fog. Okay. Um... So you case. realistically have no idea where he is. 
All right, then in that case, I'll use press the digitation to uh, disperse the fog. Which is a shame. Yeah. Okay. Um, would that work? It's a puff of wind. Yeah. Uh, and the fog is continuous for ten minutes, right? Something like that. For one hour, as long as I hold yeah. concentration on it. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds like. Yeah. See. So no. Yeah. Even yet, although yeah. you attempt to blow the fog away, it still just is is just thick. And just will not, doesn't seem to move. The only, you see like a shadow of a person next to you that you believe might be Ash. But even your eyes can't seem to see through it. If only it was magical darkness. Uh, yeah. In that case, then mm -hmm. I will do nothing. All right. Let's continue to play. Ash. Well. Whatever, I guess I'm not going to be able to help him like I thought I was. Hope they don't kill each <laughs> other. Ash is going to sheath the arrows, and Ash is actually just going to go back into the bar, sit down, nice <laughs> in his wine. He'll, he'll gonna feel around. He'll, you're going to try, yeah, make a perception check for me. <laughs> I love Fog Cloud. It makes things so difficult. <laughs> 23. Yeah, so with a 23, you manage to, you kind of remember where you're stepping, and then suddenly you find those steps leading back up to the bars. You push through, the smoke kind of follows you inside uh, before you shut the door, head back in. Yeah, that'll, that'll be it. Great. A ashes over it. Would have told Durango. Ah, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> All right, Tensveta. How you gonna get out of this one, bud? <laughs> Would I be aware of how he found me? There's only so many things that allow you to see through fog cloud. You're muted. Make a, just a straight intelligence check, I guess. <laughs> Eight. Um, you know, adrenaline pumping, heat of the moment, you're not certain. Cole's yeah, got a lot of tricks not, up his sleeve. He's not really uh, thinking straight, so that fits. He's just frustrated and focused, and he's just in his way, so. <clears throat> God, I hate 10 sometimes. Um, guess we're <laughs> just gonna try and hit him. And uh, probably it's heavily obscured, so would you count it as disadvantage? Uh, I, I wouldn't say five feet in front of you if you're if you're just making an attack against him. Okay. Yeah, no, he's right in front of you. Don't think a 17 hits. Yes, uh... It doesn't, yeah. And then as yeah, again, as you, even through the fog, as, uh, you know, as you, you try to make that swing and you move lightning quick, right, with that sun sword, you, you swing... And you try to find an arc on it, but he's, he's, he's like a he's like a wall. Every everywhere you are, he seems to he seems to either you know, put a shield between you or or manage to deflect the blow. All right, he's missed twice. It's obviously not going to hit this guy. So he's just going to bonus action. Get rid of the sun sword and uh, drop concentration on the fog cloud. And he's just going to stand there and say, fine, fucking knock me out then. That's his turn. Okay. Uh, so you drop concentration on the fog cloud. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you see, it, it suddenly it starts to uh, to dissipate, but it's still it's still like permeating around you. It's actually the area is still completely covered in fog. 
Oh no. I have a bad feeling about this now. <laughs> we just fucked up. We just... Uh, you know? uh, <laughs> you can have it back? No, yep, thank you. Um, <laughs> is... <laughs> Fuck. Cole? And as he does that, you just see his eyes just go wide in realization. <laughs> He's like... Huh. Oof. And I did just tell you to knock me out. How angry am I still? I mean, you don't know. You don't know the fog cloud. You, you don't. You don't know any of that. No. You just see panic in his eyes very quickly. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm flipping a coin here. <laughs> I'll make an insight check. Okay. Oh, uh, that's a ten. Passive deception is ten. <laughs> yeah. So. Um. Yeah, I'm still I'm still flipping a coin here. Okay. Okay. Um. You're going to see uh, Cole just like smile. It kind of like sparkle out of the corner of his mouth. Like, mate, we can end all this right now. I'm gonna cast Charm Person. I think I have advantage on that. Do you? I'm an elf. <laughs> well, we'll find out. It's wisdom, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, Pointed. you get it. <sighs> Fine, mate. I don't want to hit you. You need to shut up, though. Shh. What? What? You don't want to hear it? What? Use your words. I dropped the cloud. And it's not gone. Durango. I need you to make a strength saving throw. Oh, fuck. <gasps> oh, those, no. Those are, my, those are my specialty. Um, <laughs> the great Durango Ford is you. <laughs> we are going to uh, use Lucky and try to make that suck less. Because Durango's real slippery. 16. 16 still fails. Mm -hmm. As from somewhere behind you, you are... You, like, you suddenly you feel as if you can't move, like paralyzed in a moment. Like these icy fingers are just gripping around you and you you can't seem to move you're just your your eyes still face forward and you, you just you're, you're not it's it's hard to discern what happens it's just, it's this sudden moment of just complete loss of control oh no that's a 29 hit Holy shit. Um, shit. Shit. Um, can you use Lucky you to are make a re-roll? No, you know what? Fuck it. Critical, critical vampire bite? Let's take it. <laughs> yeah. What's, I like where this is going. I uh, know. Yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> yes. Yes, that hits. Holy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know I my just, friends. I know what this, Durango's hit point total is. I know this wound seems insurmountable, but I am the great <laughs> Durango Fortescue. Okay, so Durango, in this moment, you feel this rush suddenly as this these fangs pierce your teeth. You hear that voice echoing through your head, inviting and warm, encouraging you to take control, to take the power back. And as all those wonderful thoughts slip in your head, these visions of 
the great and powerful Durango Fortescue, untouched by death or time. You lose 39 hit points, uh, and you... Let's see, sorry. Uh, and you take that, that's necrotic damage, by the way. Yeah, I don't think I have any resistance or anything to that. Yeah, your maximum hit point total is reduced by 39 hit points. Oh. So you're saying I'm at full health then? <laughs> you are at full health. Yep, you cool. are at full health. All right. yeah. Cool. Just just for my own edification, is that like at one hit point? That's one yes. hit point, yep. That's yes. one hit point. That's one hit point, and man. We mm -hmm. thought you were squishy before. <laughs> Durango. It's your turn. So I'm, I'm getting chewed on here. The look that just... <laughs> and I'm restrained. Dude. What do I got? What can I... Do I have action? Do I have bonus action? Do I... Yeah, I mean, you can try to break the grapple. <laughs> If you have anything that teleports, it automatically breaks it. Yeah, tell yeah, sure. If you can teleport, if you can misty step, if you've got yeah. I don't, but uh, the sky self is aesthetic only. It doesn't actually change your physical Correct. form. Yeah. Yeah, I, I gotta say, all this uh this great Durango Fortescue, immortal, untouchable by death, this all sounds pretty cool. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm rolling with it, man. This sounds great. Just kinda give into it in that yeah. moment. Sure. Yeah. I mean, came out of nowhere, totally unprepared for it. Right up Durango's alley. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there'd be a lot of fighting back there. Yeah. No, I mean, that vid of your vision just swore is, yeah, seems to swirl with all these, 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 these visions of the great and powerful Durango Fortescue. All right. Ash inside. Danica just sort of shakes her head. Uh, so, I mean, I think we probably all saw that coming, right? I mean, They've kind of been yeah. going at each other a bit, yeah? Yeah, do you guys get many bar fights? No. Who's your money on? Honestly, I gotta give it to Cole. I mean, the guy's you think just... so, huh? The elf, the elf slippery, but he's just got the tenacity. Yeah, I mean, he seems like a seasoned fighter. The elf's a little flighty. Uh, but I don't know. I, you know what? I, I'm a sucker for an underdog. I'll put five gold on the elf. I got your five on Cole. That's about That'll it. end my turn. Heading on Cole. Okay. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Jen's I am definitely... losing my shit. Of all the times for um, me to be like, Ashen doesn't give a shit anymore. Like, Yeah, I think... Uh, I think Tins is literally just going to stop and go, Cole, this is not my fog. And then just just start screaming for Ash Durango and just start running towards the door. Just top of his lungs. Um, and just start screaming Strahd. Just Strahd. He he goes he goes from summer to winter in a moment. He's just gonna, you know, run to the door. Just open it up. As whatever it takes. Make a perception check. That's a lot of feet through thick fog and a and a well. Disadvantage or normal? Uh, I'd say yeah. I'd say disadvantage. Sure. Probably should have given that to Ash, but he was just trying to get in the bar. I got a twelve at disadvantage. Twelve. I'll, I'll give you a difficult terrain. How about that? Okay. So that's. I mean, I would have been dashing. Yep. Sure. <laughs> regardless, like doing yep. everything he can just to get Ash and Durango. Okay. Like. 
I don't know where they're at. So he's just going to go to the door, wondering if anybody went inside and just starts just saying, Strahd's here. Out now. And then he'll bonus action, fire up the blade. Which, you know, in a fog is probably blinding because it does make a light radius. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cole. Do I... Do I get anything from the Sunblade? Uh, I don't think it, I don't think it's gonna help me in the fog. Okay. If anything, it would hurt you. Like to your point. Cool. Uh, Suddenly, uh, Tensveta just like runs away. <laughs> you you get an attack of opportunity if you want. Well, he told him, I think. Yeah, no, he said it. He was like, yeah, I mean, he, I mean, says, he, says, he, says, he says a lot of, I mean, he says a lot of things, right? I mean, the guy, uh, <laughs> I mean, you, you, you did take a swing at him. You were pretty angry. I'm going to roll an insight check. <sighs> 13. I mean, that's above my 10 deception. The average deception of this man is, you know, lower than that. So he did. Just, so yeah, I guess so. I'll give it to you. He okay. went from he went from summer to winter in a moment. Like, um, yeah, the spear and everything's out, and just yeah, right, go, we got company. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Just had to wait until you used all my spell slots, didn't you? Same. Same. <clears throat> that might have been the point. Well, of course it was the point. Um. I'm very straw of you. I have technically one second level spell slot left. I can't fight what I can't see. So I have to detect magic up. Yeah, would I be getting anything off of Strahd with detect magic? Well, you are seeing you're seeing two figures. It's the same two figures you saw when you rushed towards. I hate that answer. <laughs> Tensveta, right? You assume you assume that's Ash and, and Durango. Or don't. It's up to you. Well, yeah. So that's uh, that's what I would assume. Oh, balls! I don't want to take. I don't. <laughs> oh God. Um. I could be meta, but I won't be. <laughs> the only way I can help is if that I if I don't die. Um. Yeah, I'm going to. Smack the spear against my shield, and I'm gonna cast Shield of Fife. Choose your shield, and you, you, that illumination starts to surround you again. It, it reflects off that that pale white fog. Uh, it's difficult to see anything. Um, you hear the voice. You hear. You hear tens of it a shout. About 10 feet away. Yeah, I'm going to try to go in that direction. Okay, make a perception check. Yeah. With disadvantage. Oh, that was regular, so that was a 10 anyway. Yeah, so. Four. Four. Yeah. Four. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you, I will give you. I will give you uh, essentially <clears throat> um, 10 feet of movement. All right. 
Yeah, I'll move right to as soon as, mm -hmm. as close to tens as I can. Sure. Um, let's see. Stop chasing me. My, I don't know where anyone else is. Um, the, well, uh, a thin outline of what, yeah. what you would, again, you see those, you're looking because you can see the magical outline. You're, you can see the outline for Durango, but uh, again, there's, it, okay. And it's not even him, it's just his weapon, right? It's that loot and a couple other things, so. <sighs> that, that glow. Yeah. Wait, Strahd has magic items? Sure he would. Fuck. <laughs> oh wait, he already had to drop the tech magic for the Yeah, there's something else I could've, uh, there's something else I could've done. But. I always forget what this character can do, because he can do a lot. Um. Yeah, that's it. That's, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold my action until I can kind of suss out where, where Strahd is. Durango, you hear that voice whisper in the back of your mind. Soon. <laughs> it's not what I want to do. Hold on. Of course it is. Anticlimactic. I mean, it is. But it's not the button I meant to press. Uh, does a twelve hit Durango? Uh, twelve misses. Wait, do I have do I have advantage? No, restrain doesn't give me advantage, does it? Restrain. Does it? I think it does. Let me check. I got another. I got another one anyway. So. 19 hit. Uh, yeah, attack rolls against the creature have advantage. Yep. Okay, so 19 hits. <clears throat> you feel this clawed finger now. Just sort of wrap this this hand, this icy hand, just wrap around your neck, that warmth draining your, your body suddenly cold as it just rips. And suddenly everything goes dark as you feel this wet cascade down your chest. You take 19 points of slashing damage. So does that go against his new max HP? One hit point, yes. So Durango is unconscious. Well, um, is it unconscious or permanently dead? Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> because he did more than double his hit point total. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say no, it's not permanently dead. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although it would pretty, it would be pretty nasty. But if that's the case, I would have just bitten him again. So you've never seen a man eviscerated with such grace. <laughs> I was gonna say, get, hope your new character is a cleric. <laughs> <laughs> no, I looked at this party and I was like, we, these guys, they need a ranger, you know? Right. Fuck. <laughs> And that's where we'll pick up after the break. So thank you everybody for uh, uh, for watching, for our exciting, let's see if uh, much like Jesus, if you believe in that sort of thing, Durango can rise from the dead as we return. Uh, give us about 10 minutes or so. Spend your elf eggs wisely and we'll see you then. and welcome back so we will start at top of initiative with Durango and Durango as the that warm wet feeling cascades down your chest you find the world spins and you are suddenly on the ground I need you to make a death saving throw can use lucky on death saves, right? That's considered an ability check. Cool. Because, like, 
that that's just not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not gonna fly. <laughs> that dog ain't gonna hunt. Actually. Oof. Oh that my dog god. Is really not. Uh, so there's a failure. The rest of you. Mm. Cole, you see uh, more shapes in the fog scurrying now across the ground. Suddenly, as you go to move, you, you're, you're, you're sort of panicked, spinning in place. You see them start to swarm out from beneath the bottom as a sea of rats washes over your feet. Uh, it's 12 hit. Uh, absolutely not. No? All right. Uh, so you just you begin to kick away as they start to bite against your metal armor, just rats, just swarming the grounds. Uh, Tenzaveta, same thing now on the stairs. You see them just start to scurry up. You can see you through the fog as it, you know, at your feet. You can see them just begin to just pour across the steps. Oh, Miss. Teased me. It teased me. Uh, same thing. You sort of dance and dart and begin to kick them away as they, they swarm, uh, or swarm all around the stairs. Ash, inside. You hear a shout from outside. Danica sort of looks at you. Uh, that ain't right. And Ash is going to Sprint out whatever door is open here. Oh. <laughs> Into a swarm of rats. Yeah, as I run into this swarm. Yeah, you see Jets Veta sort of backed up against the door, just kicking at these rats that are swiping at him with the sun sword, just sort of batting them away. The fog's still thick. This is not my... Uh, and as he sees that, he's just going to kind of almost do like a pirouette, draw the sword, and come down and do two attacks with his uh, with his sword sword. That's not how you say that word, but... Sword sword. Nope, I'm guessing an eight doesn't hit. Oh, my, I guess it's a rat swarm, but... And a net 20. Crit the rats. Sure. Um, I will take whatever we yeah, can get yeah. right now. <laughs> that, so the crit on the rats worth seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Absolutely. Yeah. So several of them, you just start swiping with the sword. And in one big swing, you, you several, you know, several of the, the their small forms, you can see the blood just start to pull and more rats just keep pouring in on top of them. Um, oh, might as well do it now. I don't know what's going on. We're going to use uh, Action Surge. And we're going to make two more attacks with the sword. Have you ever played Vermintide? I have not. <laughs> oh, you're missing out. I've heard good things. I just never did. For yeah, that's a fun one. Nine points. And yeah, another six. So points. he's he's a rat fighter. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Just starts mowing through like rat after rat after rat, just like just swiping down with the sword. Um, uh, there are still there's still rats just continuing to pour all over the stairs. But yeah, you you've killed quite a few. Uh, you hear them just scurrying and, and chomping as they, they their little teeth are gnashing against the uh, you know, biting into the wood of the stairs and pulling themselves up. And we can't move through these, right? We can't. That Andy real says you can't move through another. Correct. There. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then that'll end my turn. All right. These ones are going to bite at Tenzveta. It's an eighteen. 
It's 15 Jesus. points of piercing damage. What the? Okay. It's a, lot, it's a lot of rats, man. Barovian, Barovian rats. I have no more AoE. So or click. All right, Tens and Cole, as you guys are back to back in initiative order, I'll tell you both with your passive perception, Cole, with the addition of, of detect magic, you hear something hit the ground. Cole, you see it. You see that figure that you believe to be Durango fall. Tenzveta, it's your turn. You know, I had a plan before break, now. <laughs> Plans, that's why I don't make them. <laughs> Is the other figure still in the fog in this direction over here? Nothing you can see. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing you can see here, I mean. <laughs> Um, man, cutting action is garbage. Fuck it. Uh, let's just hit some rats as the action with the booming blade. Does 11 hit the rats? Okay. 11 hits. And I get sneak attack, which is nice. So let's roll some damage. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then sneak attack is 3d6, I believe. It's not like I ever play this character, so why would I know? <laughs> and then he takes another 10 points of radiant damage, and then the first. Let's see, we are six levels, so that's a d8 of. I think it's a d8. It's a d8, d6. I'm panicking, okay? What are we, what are we at? 22? Yep. And then another three points of thunder damage. So 25 points of damage in total between Radiant and Thunder. And then if they decide to move for any reason, they'll take another. They, they will move. They will move no longer. Okay, cool. Um, uh, yeah, so you, you just swipe down like in a, in a panic at the rats. They're crawling up the stairs. The blade just. <laughs> Like with the with the added radiant from the sun, uh, the sun blade it just cuts through them, and you watch the rats just go flying as, as several of them are just eviscerated. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my bonus action to use the help action. Uh, it says that the target of the attack can be within 30 feet of you rather than five feet of you if the target can see or hear you. So I'm gonna give the help action to. Uh, <clears throat> our friend Nicole, even though he's right there, to whatever it is he has next. Okay. And that's my turn. I'm just going to stay there. Perfect. All right. So as you, you shout over to Cole, uh, trying to give him a direction and open up a, open up a path for him as those, those waves of rats are just eviscerated underneath your booming blade. Uh, Cole. Um... Yeah, uh, uh, seeing Rango collapse, I'm probably, uh, shit. shit. I had to get one yeah. shot. Do you have any lay on hands left? <laughs> I've got nothing, mate. We just fought a wizard. I haven't rested since. You got a short rest. Doesn't that give you back to your lay on hands? Am I crazy? Um, sure lay on hands is a long rest. Yeah, long rest. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. Um. Can I do something as far as like stabilizing them, like staunch any sort of bleeding or you know? Sure, you can try. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Looks like Ryan go. No, no, you don't do this to me. You don't do this to me. 
Uh, go ahead and make a medicine check at disadvantage because you are swarmed by rats. Yep. Uh, I gave the help action. Oh, help action. Yep, so straight roll. Natural 20. Mm. So we'll say in that moment, right, you both see you both see and hear the figure drop, right? It's difficult to see anything in this, this cloudy fog beside, and the rats just chirping and swarming in around you. Um, Tenzveta's booming blade just whoosh, it, it, it strikes with such force. The, the rats go flying. The fog is pushed out. You can see Durango there lying. Blood just gushing out of his throat. You rush over. In that instance, you, you because it, you use that gap that, that, that Tens creates to rush in and just immediately begin to uh, you, you tear a piece of that, that vest off and just start bandaging around it, just trying to stay, just trying to keep the blood from from gushing further. Okay. That will bring us to more rats. It's always more rats. <laughs> Why is it always rats? These rats are going to bite at you. Um, Je uh, Ash? Ooh, that misses. That misses. Hello, new armor. 11, right? Ash. These ones will bite at Tenzveta again. Oof, bad rolls for me there. These ones are going to bite... And you, Cole? With advantage, because you're prone, trying to stop your friends bleeding. Fight me. 13 misses. <laughs> and another one. Is a 21? Is a 21 hit? Uh, Yeah, by one. He has, don't you have shield of faith up? Yeah, that's plus two, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that'd take me to 20. I need that plate, man. All right, you take nine points of piercing damage as the rats, despite the fact that you're, you're doing everything you can to stop the bleeding and to save your friend, and the rats are just crawling over you and swarming over you as you you, you sit there and just and continue to try to focus on that. Um, I uh, take Durango. six because of heavy armor mastery. Yep, sure. Uh, Durango, you are uh, no longer dying, but you are still unconscious. I, I stabilize at a single hit point? At a single... Well, no, you're not even at... No, you're still at zero, typically. Okay. But you're not making death saving throws. Cool, yeah. Um, Durango will lay there and dream of uh, being an eternal terror of the night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These rats are going to attack you, Cole. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. No, neither one will hit. Fucking rats swatting them away. <laughs> Ash. Uh, didn't think this city was big enough for rats this big. And two more sword attacks. 11. 11 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Or eight on that one. Dead rats there. So you're just, uh, just fighting through them on the stairs the best you can, fighting like, through the fog, just swiping at these rats that are just, again, swarming, um, just crawling all over the ground. Just going to keep plowing forward like a little rat yep. lawnmower. For 20 hits. 20. And another eight points of damage. Oops, eight, you said? Yep. Roll the five plus three. Yep. Pretty good damage. <clears throat> Alright, so my buddy tends Veta. Ooh, baby, 17. Mm hmm. I have six hit points. Not anymore. 
Um, I think, <laughs> I think I can impose disadvantage on that attack, actually, with my reaction. Uh, okay. Fighting style of protection. When a creature you can see starts an attack other than you within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Make a perception check. Make it a good one. Ooh. Heavily obscured. Yeah. Not very wise. Smart. Ten. I'm not going to give it to you. Okay. Um, tens at seven points of piercing damage. Unconscious and dying. <laughs> Strahd and rats. One bite from Strahd. To be fair, I got crit. I got, I got, I got smoked earlier. <laughs> sure did. Uh, right, Tens Veta. Death saving throw. Uh, you actually have a, actually no, you get a bonus to that equal to my charisma modifier because of aura protection. So uh, whenever Wild you were Durango. from the, Wild Durango, where was I that just, for you when you were rolling? I just realized, <laughs> I just realized that I was gonna, yeah. I mean, I, I was didn't going want to be my... the one to say it. I'm glad, glad it's being addressed. You know. Yeah. <sighs> Seventeen. One success. Can't hear you, buddy. <laughs> it looks like really uh, it's, it's very well done, I'm sure. So, uh, again, Cole, you watch as another figure collapses in the fog. You see Tenzveta roll and fall down the stairs as he's just swarmed and covered with rats. I, I can't. Hey, Ash, where are you? And, um,. Hit the rats. Yeah, you just got a successful throw. I'm hitting rats. Um, <laughs> you and I can help without there. actually having to help, too. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to... The one closest to Ryan go, I'm just going to say, you... And, and just sort of, like, skewering. Like, I've got, I've got the I've got the um, spear pointed down where I'm trying to make, like, a rat shish kebab. <laughs> a rat kebab. A rat kebab. Also a great character name. Nobody wants to use. Right, kebab. All right, pickle. That's Rick, my next your character. <laughs> That's twelve to uh, twenty-two to hit. Sorry. Twenty-two hits. Go ahead and roll damage. That's nine points of damage. Don't forget your second attack. Yeah, I know. I got second okay. attack coming. <laughs> I'll, I'll learn how to play this character eventually. There'll, there'll be a point where I come over the hump. It's 14 to hit. 14 hits. You have to roll a natural one. To it's hit. hard to miss. There's a lot of rats. I'll roll the one on damage, but still seven damage. Bad, 16 points of damage. All right. Yep. Just sort of just sweeping and striking with the spear, trying to bat all the rats away. And I think. I'm going to use my bonus action to dash, but I don't need to. Yeah, I'm good. That's it. Uh, does a 12 hit you, uh, Ash? Does not, no, right? Does not. Okay. And for you. Uh, yep. So the uh, the rats again, just crawling up the spear, like crawling all over everything. It's just like it's almost impossible to uh, to take a step without running into them. They uh, that's an eleven on you, Cole, which is a miss. It's nothing. Yep. I just cannot get through the uh, the the heavy armor. You just slice and, and and bat them away as they as they climb up. Again. And then one more to you, Cole. Seventeen. Nope. It's another miss. Great. Okay. And 
Durango, you are still alive, but unconscious. I'll take that, uh, yeah. <laughs> another swarm on you, Cole. As a 16, still misses. Dang it. And with that, we are at Ash again. Anyway, so I started hacking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can I offer you a fine elf egg in this trying time? <laughs> uh, four points of damage. Love all the ones on the damage rolls. It's hilarious. Nine. Nine misses, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's it. So it's just sort of next. fighting your way down the stairs. The, the the stairs now are thick with a mixture of Tensveta and a uh, rat blood. Uh, so you 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 keep fighting through the rats as you're trying to make you keep your footing down the stairs. You slip a little bit on that second strike. Uh, it just comes a little higher, and you, you you don't you don't manage to take any with you. Is that in your that's turn? It. Goal. Eight misses. Of course. More rats just come pouring out on top of you. Tenzveta, can we get another death saving throw? Probably. Plus three. Fifteen. Another success. Two successes. Let's give Cole's turn. Oh, sorry, Cole. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to need to keep hitting these rats. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 12. Uh, 12 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. That's 12 points of damage on them. Uh, the ones next to Ryan go, I'm hitting. And uh, after I, I kind of skewer the last of them, peel them off the spear, I'm going to turn around and, eh, and crack it over the top of the head of some, because I had uh, heads of some rats. It's another 12 to hit. 12 hits. Uh, 10 points of damage on them. 10 points. Don't forget, you get a uh, temporary hit points right with the spear. Oh, yeah, I do. That's right. So, yeah, what was uh, the total each? Uh, yes, yeah, the total HP, right? Um, or is that a different? Um, uh, 2d6 temporary hit points. I was thinking of uh, another item. All right, that's six temp hit points. Yeah, as that blood, the, all the blood from the rats just starts soaking in. You can almost feel the, the spear just disapprove. Uh, you get what you get. It's a proof. <laughs> All right. Oh, Oof. They got me. It's a ten on you, Ash. Uh, misses. Misses. That is who. There we go. It's a uh, twenty-one it... on you, Cole. Um, oh, not to me, not to Ash. Okay, yeah, that hits. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that would hit me to too. Ash for the reaction anyway. That's uh, eight points of piercing damage. Uh, reduce to six, so that's my temp hit points. Uh, no, it's reduced <laughs> to five, so I got one temp hit, temp hit point. Okay. Sorry, I got a lot of rats. They only need to roll like a 20 to hit you. Uh, Sawed off. Four. <laughs> yeah. All right, Durango, uh, Ash. We know the drill. Ash doesn't have anything witty to say. There's people dying around him. For a nine. You've missed these rats three times. Uh -huh. <laughs> Eight with a with a whopping AC of ten. Yep. Well, Go this ahead. one's a twenty-one. Yeah, roll damage. <laughs> I think you just need for to roll five. a new character at this point, man. I think it's over. Uh, I tried. I tried going for him. <laughs> He's slippery. 
And yeah, that'll I never use second wind. God damn it. Um Yeah, that's it. More rats on coal. Can't get through that stupid chain mail. <laughs> All right, Tens to make uh, another death saving throw for me. We're good. I'm stable. You are stable. <laughs> okay. So, and I would say, Tens to as you is you start to stabilize the uh, the the you can see. Now, all of you, the smoke and fog begin to dissipate. And with it, the rats sort of back and, fa and fall back with it, as if, as if almost a part of the smoke. They just pull back into the shadows. And as those forms scurry away into the darkness, and you won't look down at your two friends unconscious on the ground, you swear the only thing, the only sound you hear through the howling in the night is a soft laughter. Get him inside on the table. Uh, uh, help me. Uh, I'll get Rango. You get the elf. Yeah, I'll drag him inside and yep. lay him on one of the long tables. Danica, seriously, go get somebody that can do some medicine shit. Uh, uh yeah, uh, yeah, uh, oh, what's on his way? Only person we know is the priest. We might actually need him. What the fuck happened? I thought we had a visitor. Um, I'm I'm gonna start going over Rango. What I have, uh, I have perception. I'm shitty at this. Um, I, um, actually, Ash, we we, we should we should check him. Uh, both of them. Uh, yeah. So I I'm gonna check Durango for. I was staunching the bleeding. I would know that he was bit in the neck. Correct. Uh, you actually, uh, you can make a, uh, make another medicine check. I mean, okay. at the time you were just trying to stop it. You were trying to stop the bleeding and the, the, yeah. the, the gash, like his, his entire throat was like, was like cut open. I'll do a check over on tens too. Uh, please, 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 please. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, there's a lot of damage. It's just, it's just a lot of blood and just a lot of like torn tissue. So it's really difficult to make out any specific wounds. Uh, I roll a 10 on checking over Tens. Uh, Tens is just, he's, he's covered in little bite marks that are just bright red and, and look inf infected. I mean, for the most part, he's just, he's breathing, but his breathing is uh, uh, heavy. You can see that his, his, his face and, and hair are sort of flushed and alternating through colors. There's a big old bruise underneath his rib cage. <laughs> I don't know. that he's not off. actually wear he's not wearing his armor either. So. God, you got you got up pretty good. And I'll go help him seeing as there's really not much to do for tens and there's a lot of blood on Durango. I'm going to go help Cole. Yeah, and at this point, I, I have um, I have a little sensor out on the table. Um, I just have some kind of stowed away aromatics that, um, more ceremonial than anything, um, and just to sort of hide some of the smell of you know, viscera. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try to start cleaning up Durango. I don't have precipitation, but you know, I'm gonna uh, kind of rush behind the bar and. Uh, grab whatever passes for water and, and, a, and a washcloth and um, not knowing what else to do, just trying to, I, you know, again, just trying to find, you know, there's blood, ev blood everywhere, I can't, can't, you know, and just try to clean him up. Ash will help with wherever Cole tells him to clean up with the prestidigitation. 
Yeah. Between the regulars and Owen and Danica, Owen comes rushing back in with uh, Father Lucian and Ismark, uh, who, who rush into the bar to help. You manage to uh, get them upstairs um, into a set of uh, double beds where Lucian takes care of the two of them. Several painful hours that Cole feel like a millennia. And you're no stranger to battle infirmaries. You're no stranger to dying men or grievous wounds. But for a while, it really felt like you and Durango were blessed, like he was untouchable. Somehow, be it luck, be it skill, you guys have managed to get out of every scrape and every bind together. And here in this awful, awful place, such a close call. And as the time ticks away, eventually your, your exhaustion starts to get the better of you and you, you feel yourself falling asleep and Lucian comes out and just sort of taps you on the shoulder, huh. wiping, wiping blood off his hands. Well, I, I think I will be okay. <sighs> he is breathing. They are stable. The blood has stopped. I have done all I can with all the magics and powers that uh, I have available. Um, now they just need to rest. Is there any sort of untoward damage that we need to look for? You think this might have been the, uh, the man up on the hill? Uh, it was difficult to tell, although perhaps it looks like your friend's, um, the tiefling, uh, Fortescue. He was... He did not have a lot of strength, it looked like, in him to fight. There are clear marks of drainage. But it is difficult to tell with these things uh, whether that was uh, newer or um, something that has occurred sometime in the past. But uh, he was very weak. Even now, he just barely clings to life. But give them time, let them rest. Uh, call me if you need anything else, if or if anything changes. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Is Mark claps you on the shoulder again and walks with the priest down the stairs and back to the church. It is late now, early in the morning, if you will. Outside, lightning cracks and wolves howl in the distance. I'm going to go to Durango's room. Uh, the two of them are, are together. Okay. Um, the two beds um, separate and, you know, very similar. To, it's essentially your room, but it's Durango and uh, Tenzvet at this point. Both still asleep, unconscious. Now that I, now that I know that I'm looking for, I'm I'm gonna look at his neck. Okay. Yeah, with with the time, you you very easily are able to turn it. And you can see the uh, the red, uh, sort of like dark purplish marks where the this you know the healing magic from the, the priest has begun to try to heal. Uh, that wound across his neck and at the edge of that scar you can see those two puncture marks oh uh, yeah I've this before we need um to, go ahead we need to seriously consider if uh 
now this is your friend. What if those marks are any indication? Those things we fought in the boxes are any indication? We might need to uh, show him some mercy. Yeah. Catch my drift. He knows what we're doing. He knows what our plan is. If he turns over to Strahd, we might as well just go bend over for Strahd as well. Give him free access. Because if Strahd gets every, all the damage, all the information that we have, that's game over. For everybody. Forever. Um. Bull just places his hand on Ash's shoulder. And goes, um. <sighs> and goes into, um, sort of a satchel kind of beneath the waistcoat and pulls a scroll out. Thank you so well. And I pull out the fifth level greater restoration spell. It's worth a shot. If it doesn't work, speak. You gotta think about it. What do you need from me? Ashranga's the only family I've got left. I see that. And like I said, just be ready for maybe not such a good outcome. Yeah, Mike, I got stakes. Anna. And Zveta, although your eyes are closed and you are doing your best to rest up, you are conscious. gonna start casting greater restoration well, anyway as Cole starts casting <laughs> so I started casting <laughs> <laughs> yeah a few moments pass as you run through the ritual on the scroll you read the words a bit of moonlight trickles in through the window and seems to resonate all around the form that is Durango Fortescue. Sort of shimmers, sparkles a bit, and then fades back into the dark room interior. A flickering candle in the corner casting shadows on the walls that seem to dance and shuffle, filling in that space that the illumination of the spell is now left behind. Hens groans facing away. Like just straight blue. Just turns, just like turns over and stares at the wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just says, uh, <clears throat> I didn't think you were one for praying. I ain't let Orango die. I ain't let him turn on one of those things. I ain't losing a mate. Not another peep.
Yep. Durango, yeah. I was going to say Durango is the... Uh, initially, your, your dreams are filled with these visions of an eternal Durango. Uh, and they are disturbing. This untethered, unchecked part of yourself that seems to come alive in this swirling cacophony of indulgence you suddenly find yourself a part of. And then that it sort of slips away, settles for a more typical dream, a fancy dinner, wine, people looking to hear the music of the great Durango Fortescue. And for the first time since you've been in Barovia, you are filled with or I guess you, you have good dreams. Dreams that are your own, not some horrid vision or apparition of somebody else's machination. But I'm sorry, Cole, what were you saying? Um, I've forgotten. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. What you said was cooler anyway, it's fine. Yeah. And as the four of you is <laughs> the four of you sit now, two of you in bed, um one dreaming, the other fuming, the other um you you all stand in the or not stand, but you're all you're all present in this in this space, in this moment together. The night breaks, and somewhere outside, those first glints of light begin to creep through the windows of the blue water. Cole, as you are, you're barely, barely still awake. The adrenaline now long since left your veins. Ash sort of standing there with him, watching over your two friends. That is where we'll pick up next week. So, thank you guys so much for joining us on this Easter Sunday. Right? We know it's a, we know it's a tough one. Um, you know, don't fight your friends in Barovia, man. We're gonna have no to find a way fighting. to check. We gotta find a way to keep that that angry tens in check. <laughs> you swung first, bitch. Oh, come on. You were poking you a were. line with a three-inch <laughs> stick. Yeah, you, you you were about... There was... Ash was going to hit you. Hmm. And here I am, slowly and methodically, emotionally separating the group, as is my job. So thank you guys for showing up. Uh, do we have any Do we have any dice... Uh, I'm sorry, game entry tonight. Anybody want to be a... A wiener. A wiener. Too. Oh, an air traffic controller. Air yeah. traffic controller. Yeah. yeah. Fighting the, ru <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so fighting get the your... Russian repo man, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I think they might still be working on that DLC. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I mean... Are there like UFOs? This. That's all I need to know. <laughs> okay, we're going to get a roll. Oh, that was... a drum roll. And Kite 6K, friend of the stream. Thank you so much uh, for uh, hanging out with us. You and yourself, a copy of whatever air traffic controller game that we're dishing out today is. That is you know, Airport I'm... Madness World Edition. Yeah, get it right, right. Nice Air job. World, Chico de World. <laughs> nice job, Kite. Appreciate you swinging by. Congratulations on the win. Uh, let's go to Durango. Where are we raiding this week? Well, my friend, the D20, it shall decide. <laughs> oh, there's we're, that 19 you so boys. desperately needed. Oh, my God. A <laughs> uh, huge shout out to our sponsors again, guys. Thank you so much for uh, uh, all the support. Foundry, 
Forge, Tabletop Audio, uh, Dice Envy. Uh, if you guys don't uh, want to wait for your dice, if you guys want to go check out those Bifrosted Dice or any of the dice over at Dice Envy, please remember that you can uh, use our link and then use code NEG2 to get 10% off at checkout. Uh, if you guys want to support the stream that way, of course, that helps us. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, if not, you know, whatever. Just keep hanging out and trying to win them for free. Right? We've got a bunch of other cool stuff we're going to start sending out with that stuff. Uh, that's kind of why we made the change that we did so we can start controlling some of the, the shipping and packaging and, and things there. And we we know that this hot garbage we produce here for you on these uh, on these odd nights of the week uh, isn't enough to buy your love and loyalty. So we're just going to send you free shit. Bribes always work. Right. So, all right, so all right where are we raiding? Legends of Logomancy, episode three. Ooh. Ooh. Logomancy. That sounds like what you do. I, yeah, I guess yeah. you could call yeah. it that. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of Logomancy here and there. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Hopefully, you guys had a great weekend. Hopefully, you had a great Easter if you're an Easter celebrator uh, or just, just a great Sunday in general. Uh, tomorrow is Monday. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news or... It's almost already Monday for some of us. So uh, I hope, uh, hope you guys had a great time. I think our next show will be Plastic Cougar on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So make sure we see you then. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.